to actually get their habitat. See, this is a, like a savanna type. Are in this area. I know there have been so species. many that have been undescribed. Yeah. Completely different types of tarantulas here than you do in the rainforest. Yes, different sort of family. country. Well, there's a huge amount. Yeah, these paints are good. Oh. What's the biggest threat to these animals at the moment in the wild? Uh, definitely human intervention. But the biggest problem would be uh, land clearance, like most animals, and the pet trade. So as far as the black market go, do a lot of the tarantulas go overseas? Yes. Unfortunately, and I'm pretty disheartened to say that, but uh, there's people in Australia that are exporting these animals illegally because there is a lot of money overseas in uh, basically rare Australian tarantulas. So once you've captured a female like this one, then what do you do with her? Uh, predominantly use her for captive breeding as well as uh, venom extraction. How do you actually go about extracting the venom? Can you show us? Yeah, for sure. I've got a spot back up here and we can do a field extraction for the venom. So I'm just going to anaesthetise the little spider here. And what gas is that? Uh, it's just carbon dioxide. And basically, this is the most efficient way to anaesthetise them. So I think that's about enough. And if we just turn that off, yeah, there's the full and nice anaesthetised spider. Can we put that? Pop so that. you pop the fangs over the vial. Position it, and then just give it a mild shock. So by giving it a mild electric shock, that stimulates the venom glands? Yes. It looks very fiddly. It is. Oh, there you go. Can you see that? Yep. And that's Fagilis tarantula venom. As you can see, there's two drops of venom there, and that'll be used for biopharmaceutical screening. So is that an average amount of venom that this spider would use to inject its prey? Yeah, I think that's about the amount that they'd inject when it would prey on them. See the fangs here? These fangs are as big as most Australian land snake on average. And you've been bitten by one of these guys before, haven't you? Yeah, unfortunately it's a lot bigger. This is a really small one. That's got to hurt. It does. It's about eight hours or ten hours of uh, nausea, vomiting. Don't like the sound of that. 